and I wanted to have a look at the spark plugs and I've had this for many many years and I can't give it away but it takes both sizes yeah, if you put it on a bigger plug that just revert, um, retract that little flop unless you put the spring on it and then it won't and I wonder how strong I have to be not bad I could do a compression test, wouldn't I? Well, that's funny. Never seen one like that before. I wonder how you clean them. Oh, that rag did a good job. This is that easy to get at. Uh, you can do it every time you've been out. I'm not going to sandpaper it because uh, I might take off a the crucial surface. Mm, it looks dark in there. I remember telling the man how to get the bottom one out. You probably take the three and then use the shifter. And he said, "Yep." So I'm not going to put those back. I'll just lay them in order: top two, three, four, and then I'll uh, get the bottom out and clean it too. If it breaks, I'll have to go and get a real one. I mean, uh, another one. That was a bit tight. Burn mark on oh, the edge. The others have got that. So it must travel. No. In that particular hole, it must travel over the edge. And it could be a chip off the piston or anything for all I know. First of all, I have to get a shifter to get in there. Or an open ender would be better still. Just when we thought we were going to run out of tools, I. Uh, I remembered I had them. And now that motley lot, I plucked this one. It happens to be like I've got a 21 mil and a 20. No, I've got a 20 mil and a 22, and it's got to be 21. That turns out it's 716 Whitworth. No, 716 BS. That's where is that? Uh, BSW. I'll give up. <coughs> anyway, somebody's uh, bent it for us. So we can... Uh, maybe they had one of these once. Millions of years ago. I've got the top on here. Yeah. I hope I don't mix them up. Nearly, nearly loose. So, there's another one that's almost clean. Maybe the bottom end doesn't work, but that's got the line across the thread. I'll better clean it. I just pulled this out of the packet. It's got some stuff inside. I don't know. Uh, looks second hand. Don't have to go all the way back or not. Maybe I'd better. We already knew we had to buy a different fuel fitting. So I'll go and get this. I'll come home. It looks like it's got some stuff in it. Oh, I took a photo here. Yeah. And I'll go all the way back and it's nothing but a bit of dried up oil. So I took this out because I have a hose. And the hose goes on the barb. On the barb. I went to screw it in. Of course it doesn't fit, does it? I think when they hang stuff up together to make this with that and the other thing it would at least warn you that it's not going to fit so lucky I've got this uh, coupling so I can put that back in put that on there and put that in there with lots of Teflon tape I have to clean this out too because I left a fair bit of tape inside it and you don't want that getting into your carbies Fuel filter should stop that, shouldn't it? You hope. So, when you screw in, you want the tape wrapped around so it feeds itself in. What happened then? So, if you screw it in that way, that's how you put the tape on as well. I don't need much on this one because it's 
Got the old one still, the old stuff still on. I just rip, ripped it off again. I'm blocking the uh, entrance with it. I'm in a panic mode now, I'm trying to get this thing going. And uh, nothing but hold ups. Haste makes waste, huh? Try again. Just take a little bit off. Now, what I said, we go around pretending to screw it in, trying not to get it in front of the hole. I got started. Didn't want to go in. Saying you put too much on, you put too much on, too much. And we don't want it coming loose in the middle of the ocean. You know, 100 metres from shore. Let's see if that's enough. This goes on all the way to easy and there's not enough. Seems pretty right. There's a mail. Put some tape on this one. Put that in there. One of the new tape better than my tape. The old tape. Trying to keep, I'm trying to keep it flat, but it's not easy. That one is turning on the other one. This one is still turning into that one. This uh, came with the compressor boiler over there. This one has to be shut before that one. Sometimes they fit too much. Take as much out, superfluous out as you can. I'll do a quick test fit. If it doesn't fit, I'll have to buy a different motor. I think it goes in here. Push. Mm. Very interesting. Wish I could see. I'm not supposed to turn the motor with the wires. I've got the steering disconnect for something. I had the steering disconnected, so I had to go and get a new belt. Huh? Mm. Bolt. That goes not that way. Maybe this way. Yeah. Oh, 
I have to go vertical or horizontal. Can't even see the hole. Right. I push it in, in vertically. No good. I push it in horizontally. Still no good. It's uh, it's about eleven o'clock. It's pointing out. Yeah, that's tight fit, boy. Very tight fit. I'm gonna get it out again. Have to get it out again. Yes. <coughs> well, who's going to help? Try these old gloves, which I've worn worn through from sanding. That's the second pair that was worn through, and the third one's starting to look like it. Must be doing something wrong. Put the hose on and use the hose to push. Like that turned to there, right? It just seems to be a bit hard to uh, get out. I'm going to put the hose on. I really do hope this fits. It's a bit empty. <coughs> that, I hope, goes in here, right? that going to work if that, that likes to go in that way and then turn that way that will be on top now where the uh, receptacle is it's closed off from the engine compartment and when you tilt the motor up I think it uh, runs down but it might run into a well let's see if you have any spills that's tight to have a chain. I'm going to get the measure I'm going to get a measuring jug. Why you'll see in a minute. Why I've got a 250 mil measuring cup. I have some two stroke fuel, 25 to 1, and I have some plain fuel. This wants 50 to 1. So first I'll put in the, this plane unlet it, which is enough for 250 twice, it'll be half a litre. Somehow it's supposed to screw on. I feel like it's got half a litre in it. Okay, wet the funnel. Bring a funnel. Oh, I know it is a funnel. I remember seeing this funnel on uh, videos. I'll put that in like so without spilling any much. Now I've got to make sure I've got enough for another 250. Yes, it'll be okay. Oh, I'll have the table. These are good containers. I think they come from Canada. Where all the fellas are in the forest cutting down trees with chainsaws. Extremely flammable. Australian standard. New Zealand approval. Where do they come from? Not, su not suitable for racing fuels. It's got... Uh, French as well as English, so it must be Canada. Scepter, made in Canada. Mm -hmm. So we have some uh, this stuff. Straight unleaded. Gonna have some 25 to 1 in here. That's actually synthetic oil, so it shouldn't smoke. We hope. 
Uh, now 750 mil in there so far. Plus this. Makes a whole litre. Now before I connect that up I'm going to do a compression test while it's cold and it hasn't run for months and months and many months. Now there's the water catcher I made for the smaller motor. The 9.9 Evan Root, not the classic 50 which was a 60. Mercury with the rings on. Lucky the wing fits on top. I mean, it doesn't go all the way down. I just have to connect the hose out to the garden. Both ends are the same. Probably most of the water will go over the sides, but there's a drain just over there. I'll run this out. It's 10 metres of it. It's about fair way. I'll switch this off because I have to go and get the earmuffs and I'm going to turn on the water gently. I don't know if this is allowed. It's working. The next one should be down as well. Yeah. Then I'll turn it. Up turn. Right. One. And that one. I might have to charge the battery a bit. Well, it didn't go below 11 and a half. Uh, it seemed like a flat battery to me. I see it, it seems like a flat battery because I've purposely left it standing on the bench untouched for a month to see if it was any good. And all this time it was always showing 11.3 volts. Now I'm going to get the charger and put it on that for a while. Might be enough to get it going. I just wanted to get, oh I can do a compression test with a rope. Well the battery was flat, it didn't take long to not work much anymore. So I had to make a, a pull start rope. It's not too hard, there's no plugs in. <coughs> I'll call that top one number one eh? It's not quite zero but near enough. And we'll see what it goes up to. I broke my arm on the first try. I've got two turns. I don't know how you're going to pull that with four cylinders. Plugs in. Uh, just over 75. Now that's funny, that's what the Evinrude went to. And yet I tried this on the compressor and it was pretty right. Now, oh, just over 100. That's half thing. And I'm going to write down what it says. Ready, set. Oh, 110. This is after three, four, five months. No, he ran it when I bought it, and that was in July. But I say 110. So, okay, I wrote down 110. Release it. Okay, we'll tilt down a touch. There. It's nearly empty in it. It's not going to make any difference. Right. This went 
Good pass number two is pressure point. Here we go, one, two, three, go. That made it up to 90. Here we go again. 110. Two, 110. One, 110, two, 110. I'll tilt this a bit more. Ready, set, go. It's just over 90. And again. The boat nearly fall over. It's uh, 110. What more can you ask for? Got a drill a hole. If I can turn it. No, the hose is just about ready to break. I'll just assume I'll put a plug in the bottom and then have a feel. Oh, where's the camera looking? There's nothing to look at down there. I am putting back in one sparking plug. Now, let's see if I uh, if I can feel any difference. And no connection is made. Good. I think that feels pretty much the same. Yeah, I reckon they're all the same. Battery charge has dropped down from nearly 5 amps to 2. That's encouraging as well. Pardon me. Put some more plugs in. This is easier than bending over a mudguard. Although it wouldn't be so easy out in the water, would it? You'd have to have a, a, a lilo or something to stand on that. want to do this stuff and you ever get to a market and see one of these sitting on the bench for a couple of dollars, jump in and grab it. So that's a number of spark plugs. Pop on some uh, HT wires. That's high tension. These have got finger grips or whatever and that one doesn't. One, two, three, four. Now to bring around the petrol. I've connected the tank. I've done some pumps. You can hear it going in. Now it's firm. I need to get the water back on now. Okay, water's on. I'm going to turn the key. I haven't been charging for very long, but. Uh, it might have come up far enough and the battery charger I'll leave on so the extra couple of amps might help. Leave it for a couple of hours, go and pack up, Let's turn the water off. been a while, an hour, an hour and a half. The battery is still charging at two amps. Where's my string? I mean the rope. Right. Now, water is on. Drains is on. Petrol. Going to pull the string, okay? If I can. Three, set. Didn't go yet. It appears to be uh, rather stiff. It hasn't fired yet. Open. 
kick there. Okay. Stand back here. Ready? Hang on to it. If it does kick back, I'll end up down through the brick wall. Drink some more. Here we go. Ah, the last tent. Everybody ready? Run. Huh. Now we get some, some compression. Compression's up to a thousand pounds per square inch. Well, I don't get it. I don't get why it won't turn over. It's so tight. make it look like it's work in progress. Now I'll go and do it using uh, the electric start of the half dead battery. I cover the starter motor. Won't release unless this is actually running like that. Seems to have tension on it. I don't know if that should be able to move or what. I don't know if it's just this bit moving or the whole shaft and the motor. Well, I've got to look at these videos of the spark first. If there is one. Yeah, the battery's still half dead. What I've done, I've sprayed... Uh, spray some butane gas in that one after putting the cylinders away as far as possible, put the plugs in and I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to turn over once and go pop. Here we go, one, two, three. Oh. Can't get a turn out of it. I'll give it a tug on the rope, but I don't think I can get it going fast enough. I'll just have to save up for a battery. It'll take me three weeks. The impella should still be wet. If this back fires, oh yeah, I've already went, been over there. A little bit of rope on. Ready, set. Can't move it. Didn't go pop. String come off. Can't turn it because of compression is coming on. Here we go then, bit of, a bit of speed. Alright. So I still need a battery. Now I'm going to try it with another old battery we had. I've already bought a new which is coming shortly. I just thought I'd throw this in and see if it's any good.
the battery is good, but we need some fuel. I just checked my nuts on here and I remembered I hadn't tightened them up, they're just sitting there. They're not even Loctite and the left hand one is trying to gal on me. I've got it partly off, so I want to wind it back so I put talcum powder on, on both sides of the nut and I'll just see if I can get it actually all the way off. I'm getting it on first. It's one way to do it. Rather wasteful. <clears throat> oh yeah, the battery came. So we uh, do this. I better stop and start to save the file size. Yep, running again. It's trying to lock up in one particular tiny spot. If I can get over it, I'll have to uh, try and get rid of it. Ooh. Yes, I'm past a little bit. Interesting to see what it looks like. That's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's supposed to be 35 today. This time last week it was 13. Crazy. I do know what was on here. It was a little bit of sealant. Might be causing it. Like I said, uh, gumming up. Go and get the wire brush and clean it off. Can't see any mechanical damage. Then again, there's always a chance that the seal and stopped it from gumming. Shiny up here and uh, not shiny down here, but I think only this much was exposed. I'll get some more powder and put it back on. All stainless steel. Hey, what's going on now? Oh, Lock immediately. I'll have to put some grease on instead. There was a raven that just flew past. Four feet off the ground and in the last ten feet lifted to six foot to clear the gate. some grease standing by. I need it. If I need it. I must learn to speak properly. I have some grease standing by in case I need it. How's that? Is that slightly understandable? This is one reason I have to leave the foam, buoyancy foam, uh, removable in case I don't want to get that off. Oh, I'm going to do the other side now. You see the orange peel in that bit and everywhere else it's the same. I just went over the top with one coat of Mr. Buff. It seems to have uh, removed the whole lot. I'm thinking about having to get sandpaper and things. So having done one I'm supposed to uh, wipe it clean with water and then put a coat of polish. Kitten number one. While I think of it let's have a look at the uh, remains of the fuel. I don't know that those bits of paint came in from my wire brushing but I mean look at the blackness so forget about that very importantly we were uh, more interested in getting a nice finish on this 
Here is the polish, number one. Cream polish. Mostly cream, I mean mostly uh, wax. It says something I didn't uh, wake up to, because I never used to have to do this. Don't let it dry before you buff it up. In the old days you let it dry and then when it was powdery you'd uh, buff it off and get it, end up with a nice finish. Not this stuff. Get it done. Here's a nice old rag that's only clean in one spot. It's really dry already, I'm using much force. Now that's not mirror finish. I can still see orange peel. So one thing to do, only one thing to do. Uh, the best thing to do with this buffing stuff is to have a fair bit of water in it. And I feel it cutting. More. <clears throat> this is made of uh, secret formula that does rapid cutting at the start and then all the particles break down and give you a, a smooth action later on. So I mean there's no guarantee on the particles because they break down all the time. It says when you're getting a shiny look which I don't have yet. It looks very uh, smooth. I'll turn it over. There's some dried up cutting compound already. Turn it over. Do this. Yeah, that's left marks. Maybe from the polish, maybe not. I'm going to buff it one more time. I mean cut it with Mr. Buff. Put a lot more on this time. You can hear the aggressivity. Is that a word? It doesn't stay uh, wet long. What if we just keep doing it? Oh yeah, paint just comes off. I won't go any further because I've got a fright. I thought I'd gone through the paint on the edges. I haven't even touched the edges. But it sure is removing the paint. Oh, that's supposed to be the polishing rag. No, I will get another one. Just one side. Then it's supposed to be dried with a chamois. Okay, I can do that. I'm going to get the chamois. Now, in order to dry it with the chamois, I'll have to wet the chamois. I don't know how it got holes in it. It's a nice big one. When I was about 14, a mate and I set out in our own business doing window cleaning around our local suburb. We had a billy cart, a ladder, buckets, chamois, Bon Amy and built up quite a lot of customers. They even had regulars, you know, they got it for a discount. This probably wasn't bad money. Five shillings being half a dollar in 1955. Let me see, when I started a real job in 56, I was getting, before tax, five pounds, two and six, which is like uh, $10.25 for 40 hours. So for four hours, I was getting a dollar, two and a half dollar two and a half for how many hours four we could have done about eight house eight houses including traveling in that time so we would have done four dollars it's the same when i had a paper round i got one dollar 
for a week off the paper round, plus what I sold in the pub. And one day the man at the station entrance was sick, and I was on there for four days, and I was making, oh, golly, four pounds a day or something. That's, uh, I can't even calculate that, it's too big. That is maybe about the right finish I'm looking for. If it's too shiny, it'll look artificial. Because the other thing is, you can always do a bit more later. It's a little bit dull. Why is it dull? I can't see any, uh, or hardly any, uh, what do you call that stuff? I could get the polishing machine, but ridiculous feeding. I'd lose control and go right through to the metal. I'm going to try the back bit. You can't see the back bit. Oh, I'll do the front bit as well. What can go wrong, eh? Hey, can you see? Yep. A little bit of wax still on the sponge. Ah, damn it, gone. Moving. I might as well do the hole at the top. Of course, you can polish it more than once. I don't know if I've tried that yet. Oh, yeah, don't let it dry. Remember that? I think I'll just leave that uh, orange peel. As I say, it comes off, you can do it any time if it looks out of place. See the damage? Can't fix oh, paint, uh, paint, a little bit of black paint might hide it, in which case I should uh, I'll have to wash it with acetone and then everything will fall off. I'm wasting time here. Do it on the face, that bit. First in the middle. A bit more on, eh? Okay, one little job left, and that's to polish a knob. Looks very shiny. When it's on the motor, it'll just look like new. Okay, switch it off now. You don't want to see me sand in a petrol tank there. clean a few spots and I'll do it with a brush. For instance that bit and that bit where the lid rubs and that bit and that head bulb. I don't know about the others. There's mild concern about the head bolts. One or two have got a well this one has a tiny bit of rust. like corrosion type stuff. I've got some rust converter here. What's this down here? I uh, like trying to uh, get home in a hurry. Weekend warriors. Little boys haven't grown up. I'm going to wash this when I come back. What am I going to do when I come back? Nothing. Could pull out a spark plug, just have a look. Oh, diddle. What? Uh, to recap, I brushed all the head nuts and that one. There, 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 there. Then I put a bit of this uh, rust converter I have into this redundant cap. Then I use this nice brush and I went dab, 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 dab on all the nut head bolts bolt heads. And so the brush just washes out in water and I really don't know if they need doing because they after I brushed it it seemed like uh, they were clean anyway so they could be stainless steel. I'll have to look it up one day. I'm looking for a clean container and the cleanest I could find was the lid off this one. So I'll put some in there. Watch out it doesn't blow back on me. Where's it going? Oh yeah. And most of that will be solvent. I'll try and be quick. A little bit down there. Yes. A little bit here. More yes. A bit on the 
around here. I can do this again when I do another coat on the engine cover. I'm not going to paint the aluminium piece I made. I want it to be uh, visible. That's one bolt. That's where the uh, evaporator. However, I have more. Where was I? This uh, thing up here that I didn't even see, I think. There's another head. Didn't I do that one? No. I don't even know if I cleaned them. I probably didn't need it. Just pulled out a plug to see uh, if they were foul, but with the WD-40, and it looks like there's a drop of water on here. I hope it was in the fuel and not not in the uh, cylinder. I'd better pull the rest out and check them. The second one looked a bit gummy. I just cleaned it with some acetone, and it came off the end. So it's got to be the uh, WD-40. I'll bring number one up. So I only wiped the water off of my finger before, if it was water. Now I'll... Uh... Oh, some of that's off the thread. But in the middle is a bit. Around the centre pin. I wonder if you're supposed to carbon them into uh, wire brush them. Or just let them, let them run until they've burnt away to rubbish. I'm doing this because I need a rest from planing the wooden pedestal basis. I'm nearly halfway there. So number three was reasonable. This is number four. Looks uh, very dirty. Sorry about I don't know where I'm looking because the viewfinder screen is upside down to me now. Not tilted far enough. Yeah, I've cleaned some of it off. Well, that was that. I'll put these back in and check the uh, check the check the fuel filter. Well, here's a section where I should say um, how to remove the fuel filter on a classic 50 or a lot of Mercury's. You grab this and you turn it. I did read where it's very tight. Yeah, somebody put this on that's much stronger than I am. I hope it's a normal thread. I'll. Uh, use this. Ah. So it does work. Why don't I put some silicon or whatever against the o-ring? So why did it stop running? I'd have to imagine it was the WD-40. I'll only know when I put some fresh fuel in the tank that's yet to be painted. I'll try that out. There's a bit of muck in the bottom. I'll go and uh, get that green bowl and tip it into that. The, uh, there's some dark matter down here. I'll get the bowl. I'm here with the bowl. I'll pour half it on the ground. Looks clean enough. A bit of dust in the bottom. A little, oh yeah. I'll have to let that evaporate to see it. So I'll just uh, wipe that clean. The filter. The filter itself. Oh yeah, got a bit of dirt in the bottom. I can get some petrol that I use for the mower and uh, wash them in that. Yeah, that's up. Okay, that was interesting. I have some nice clean fuel unleaded and I'm going to put the filter in like so and then I'm going to... The idea is to put this in but it's not going to work is it? Yeah. Not too bad. Let's go like this gently. Any dirt coming out yet? Place this on the rag. It's perfectly clean inside, as far as I can see. Then we've got a little bit in the bottom of that one. How can I do that? Not going to fit. I'll do this. I'll do that, this, that, 
this, that. Totally uh, spotless. So I'll have to sit this somewhere, let it evaporate. Now I was thinking about putting some silicon on the O-ring. Then I was thinking about putting some rubber grease on the O-ring. And then I was thinking about, uh, don't do anything until I make sure. How do you do this? You pop this up. And it stays. Oh, very good. Pop this up underneath. And screw, screw, screw. I think that was, that'll do. I can show you this while we're here. On the bottom of the carburetor bowl is a drain plug up there. You can unscrew that and let it drain. Maybe I should do that. No, I better not. How do you get to the bottom one? No, oh, you can if you're serious. I won't do that unless uh, it doesn't want to run. Okay, something I haven't done before. So at last I know where the front is. I've also learned that you pull this when you want to tilt it. That's why we're so hard. Uh, you know, good to do it. I think it sits like that somehow. That is uh, for now or later. Oh, yeah. so, it's loose, isn't it? Pull it down onto the other bit. Uh, which way is up? That way, I think. Now I've turned these, so they're going to be uh, out of adjustment. Yeah. I don't think I'm pinching anything. Oh, yeah, down there. That definitely go on the outside. Oh. I might go on the inside. So what's going on here? things are obvious now. I was being too careful to try and turn it and this is not in place. So I'll just switch it off and on. And on. So now I've got to take this off or at least release the uh, catches. One, two. So here I am. The paint stopped working. Wasn't even the third done. So I want to start the motor now. We will have a problem. It's, uh, I've lowered it down and it's, the skeg is digging into the ground. Maybe because it's on a slight uphill. It's sort of flat here. It just starts going uphill there. So uh, I'm going to try and use the uh, tilt thing up. Front cover's already fallen off. I say that word is mirror image. Is that me or is it just. It's the right way out, but it's mirror image. Didn't know how to do that. Anyway, that fell off. Is that it? Mirror. 
Yeah. Let's see what's going on now. Oh, yeah. There's a bit that comes off. No need to take off the top. I just want to see the fuel go in. Looks like it's already got some in there. I finally got the blasted connection in and with all the back pressure it's come out to, you know, I have to learn how to do that. I hope by the time I turn the key, just a little, look at the paint. The uh, primer works okay. The galmet, I think. The vents is open. Petrol's that full. Squeeze. Uh huh. You're watching? Yeah. It bubbled. And it bubbled again. It bubbled again. And again. And make sure it's not coming out. Out of the connection. Seems dry. Squeeze the bubble. Nice air bubbles now. All getting tighter. It is at the point that they call hard. And all I have to do is go and get the hose and put the earmuffs on. Next job is to turn on the hose gently. I have to go by a number of clicks per second. use a manual choke. Pull on.
Bro. Can somebody tell me where I can find the pee hole? I cannot see anything unless that's here. Oh, water cooling must be working a little bit. This park place can't be too dirty. I think I'll call it a day somehow.